right, count it down for me, Reese. Three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> We're back, baby! Who we got here today? Reese. Lewis. Yeah, we're back, baby. This is Blake Sean, the big BS, Blake the Tank. Sign here. All right, we're jumping right back into it. Last week, we were on the loud one because I was back and I had to let out all the energy. But we got Celsius in the house today. We got Stanley Cup and I'm vibrating. So we're going to do it on them, baby. It's just another day here at the Not So Real Estate Podcast. We got a lot to talk about. What's on the agenda today, Reese? Well, stop, uh, Lewis. What do we got? Congruency. Congruency. Let's. Can I just say that was just, that was so rude and unnecessary. Oh man! But my job is to create pattern interrupts for the show, and I'm good at it, baby. That's what we do. Lewis, what would you say? Congruency. Congruency. I was waiting for you to say stop. <laughs> so, stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congruency. Cool. What else we got, Reese? Stop it. Lewis, what we got? <laughs> well, uh, are we going to start it off with the uh, lyrics? Oh! Lyrical Royale. Lyrical Royale. Royale. Oh, boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. All right. What do we got, Reese? All right. So mine is from the notorious B.I.G. Never heard of him. This is how it goes. It goes like this. S cargo, my cargo, 160, swiftly, wreck it, buy a new one. Oh, freaking A, Reese. Can I ask why you decided to do that lyric this week? Well, I bought a fast car this week, and it, it does go. Indeed, I can confirm that S cargo, my cargo, swiftly. One sixty though. I have mom listening to the podcast. I haven't, I haven't pushed it over um, eighty yet. That's a lie. Eighty uh, five. Eighty five. I haven't gone over eighty five yet. I probably Apologize will not. To your mom I will right probably now. not go over eighty five. Yeah, good. And so I think they do go up to one sixty though, because I did ask the guy, and he said that the speedometer goes up to one eighty, but he believes that they can go faster than that. I don't know if he was just, I mean, I had already signed papers at that point, so oh. I'm sure he wasn't trying to sell me on it, but. Yeah. Yeah, it does go fast. I schooled some fools yesterday. Well, what's your name? What's your name, Reese? What? What's the car's name, Reese? Oh, uh, Blue Barrymore. Is that what's going to stick, Reese? I think it's going to stick, yeah. Inspiration was first the Raptor from Jurassic World, the Velociraptor, Blue, mm-hmm. B-L-U. And then Blake so elegantly said Blue Barrymore. And I just liked it. Even though I'm too young to really appreciate or know Drew Barrymore. Um, yeah, she was always whatever to me, to but, be honest. But, I mean, still yeah. up there. 50 still First Dates, nice. solid movie with Drew Barrymore. Right? She's in that movie, right? 50 First Dates, mm-hmm. is that what I'm telling you? And, um, um, yeah, she's in it. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, she's yeah, the main yeah. girl. She yep. forgets everything. Yep. Um, but... And I also do like the song Drew Barrymore by Bryce Vine. Mm-hmm. That was like my introduction to Bryce Vine. So Yeah, that's a good song. Blue's good Clues. Song. And then we talked about Blue's Clues. We did. Who I knew that, that Blue down. was a girl? I shot that down immediately. No. I didn't know that. I didn't do know. you guys believe me when I say that? Is Blue from Blue's Clues a boy or a girl? I'll ask you this, Blake. It's 2023. doesn't matter. Touche. And it's June. Does Blue even identify nowadays? I don't care what anyone identifies as. Oh, oh I can't frick. say that. Sorry, I take it back. Freaking A. But I already said it, so here we are. All right. <coughs> no, that's cool. That's good. That's fine. All right. Blueberry Moore. Blueberry Moore. Reese got a new car. Let's yeah. talk about that a little bit later. I want to circle back Let's, on that. Yeah, we'll do that. What else we got? So the lyric that I chose today... It goes something like this. Crap, I can't find it. Um, got a lot of people worried about the things I say and a lot of different haters that they bring my way. Dang. Nice. That went deep. Who was that from? Uh, Mac, Mac Miller. R.I.P. He's got some solid yeah. ones. R.I.P. He's got some solid ones. 
R.I.P. Are we taking a moment of silence? Yeah, he was a real one. Pretty sure he sacrificed himself for Ariana Grande. All right, next. <laughs> Just throw this, sprinkle that uh, one. I'm going to stick on the R.I.P. Mac Miller here. Um, it was cool. Me and Lewis actually uh, was listening to the same song, Cruising to Work, today. So that's the vibe. And it was uh, Wake Up by Mac Miller. Mm-hmm. Roll down my windows and was bumping mm, that this morning. True. Yes. Oh, and then real, real quick, uh, are we supposed to have our mics down like this, talking down into it, or? I can't do that because he told me I breathe into it too much. So no, I need to go he said this. you make out with the mic. Right? Is it what? No, but that was my second criticism. So my this first is, one was so this I is okay right here. No, like this. Right? Am I doing this correctly? Okay, this is how you do it. Right? So I'm correct. Horizontal. Yeah. Because if it's up like this. Oh. You're just breathing. No, I know. That's mic. what I was saying. So this is horizontal. correct. Right horizontal, this is is horizontal is correct. Okay, cool. Horizontal if is correct. We don't correct. know what horizontal is, Kalina. Yeah, has, we can ask Kalina. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think I like right. that. Cool. This has been Caleb time. Oh. Thank you, Caleb. Nice. KT. True. All right. <clears throat> so I got Mac Miller here. Wake up. Different different line there's actually a few on here some are appropriate some aren't mm. um and i really like to toe the line but i'm gonna lean a little bit more conservative mm. uh well it's funny actually part of the lyric on yours mm -hmm. was got a lot of people worried yeah about the things i say and a lot of different haters that they bring my way i let them grill though they can watch the money pile okay oh, he's yeah. even singing it yeah, no. So that's that wasn't mine, but I just wanted to reiterate. That's mm, solid. They can yeah. grow for sure. Yeah. All right. You guys ready for mine? Yeah. <clears throat> Tell me. Got these doubters listening. Surprised when they feel him. Balling like Jordan. You're balling like Wilson. Dang, dude. What are your, thought, what are your, what are your thoughts, Reese? <laughs> You can't even, yeah, I'm speechless. Nice. Can I say another one? Oh, you know because what? Because I feel left out of not using Mac Miller. Oh, I have another one too. Okay. I can save it for the next Drop episode it. too. All can right, I go for it? it. Yeah, yeah. This is from, um, this is from his song called Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Solid song. Yep. But the lyric goes like this. Take over the world while these haters are getting mad. Ah, oh, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. That's mm. good. It's good. Solid one. Cool. Man. My neck's kind of hurting now. What? I'm feeling this little pose right here. Like, I've never sat like this. I, I think like Lewis said it earlier, but yeah. there's a different swagger. There's something going on with yeah. Reese. What is it? Uh, What's going on with him? It just, I think confidence, more confidence. Um, really? Yeah, his brother said another word. Is it too much? Word. Is it too much? I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm feeling it. You are? Yeah, okay. a little bit. There's some things like, um, like the hat backwards with the hair sticking out a little bit. Does it look good or what, does it look stupid? What are your, what are your thoughts? I was a little so about it today. I actually had a couple questions on this, and I'm gra I'm glad it's being brought up. Okay, let's ask away. Do and it's not a big deal. If the answer is yes or no, but mm -hmm. do I do that with my hat sometimes? Do you think you're seeing me do it? Yeah. And then you're that like, could, oh, yeah, look. I think so. Yeah. Twins. I usually try to do something. Yours, you have yours flows a little bit better with your hat, though. Sometimes I get worried that my hair is sticking out in a weird way of my hat. So, see, so you're actually know. a level up on me. I have goes been under a little bit. And yeah, you've been doing that. And I just got a haircut, so the mullet's fresh. Mm -hmm. See, nice. I would say that's a level up on me, though, because it comes out the back a little bit more elegantly. You know? Yeah, it feels nice. I got it thinned up. Yeah, it looks you good. Know, it's, it feels good. Um, but I will go like this, and now that it's summertime, the reason sometimes I do this is I'm trying to get that, that little, tan. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Ventilation. <sighs> Ventilation well helps, yeah. depending on the hat, if it's too thick, and then the hair. That's true. There's a tall tale sign for me on the mullet when I know that I need to start considering a haircut. A haircut. And it's a catch-22 because it's a beautiful thing in the sense that my, my sign is when I can start hearing the wind whistling. Mm. Ooh. through it so but i can actually a, it can pick up a, a sound yeah like there's a frequency vibration that comes off of the hair mm -hmm. and it tickles my ear a little bit but it like i can hear it and so typically when that's happening 
I know that we're entering like a new level of length and thickness yeah. and everything else and I'm probably gonna have to get a haircut soon. So but that it's was... also probably a nice sound to hear though. Oh, it's comforting. Yeah. Borderline like the ocean. Yeah. Put a seashell up to your ear. Sure. When you're a kid. I love doing that. My adult version is growing a mullet and letting the wind blow. I you should know? do that. I've been so. told multiple times my mom told me not to do a mullet. Yeah. Because, you know, when you guys were doing it, I was considering it because mm. I had FOMO. Yeah. But then mom said no. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't see myself with it. It looks great on you. If it it, it you. works. And it feels weird to me. Like that one time a couple months ago when you got the haircut, it looked good. It didn't look bad, but it was just weird. Like I was like, I don't know who this guy is. It's because almost I've only like known I've you with the mullet. There's like a persona that gets attached yes. to the hair, right? Yes. It's I interesting. So. Yeah. Weird. Interesting. But anyway, that's my tall tale for, for the hair and the mullet. But anyway, I just wanted to ask that because yeah. I don't even recognize now when I flip my hat backwards, but like if I'm in thinking mode or whatever, it'll be normal. And I'm like putting it backwards. Like there's something that clicks in my head when I change the position of my I hat. I rotate the hat for sure. Cause yeah. if I'm driving, I'll put it forward. And sometimes when I'm just like towards seat. the end of the day, I'm like sideways. Like I'm like getting funky. Yeah. Just getting funky with it. Weird up there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel it. No, I was in the Brixton store on Saturday and I bought three shirts and two hats, and I was really feeling their clothes because I had never had anything Brixton before. Mm. But I bought three shirts, and I'm really liking it. Like, I like the, I feel like it's like a beach vibe mm -hmm. a little bit that, yeah. I'm, that I'm digging. And quality material, it's you feel like. It is very quality material. It's very nice. This it's segment awesome. of the podcast brought to you by Brixton Whoa. Clothing Manufacturing. Sold yeah. all over the place, but Brixton, if you're hearing this, there are slots available for you to market, and we have some great, great network for you to tap into over here in Tulare Kings. True. Kern, Fresno, and San Luis Obispo counties. Mm. Brixton Manufacturing Clothing. Get to the top of your game with Brixton. I made that one up. That was good. That, that was, was a good tagline. Yeah. Yep. Solid. Oh, cool. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that, Reese. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a... My pastor actually called it, it's an interesting term, but it's called pleasure stacking. So like eating an Oreo is good. Ugh, I love Oreos. Right? That's, that feels good. Mm -hmm. Eating an Oreo in bed with a glass of milk mm -hmm. is pleasure stacking. Yeah. Do you understand now? Yeah. Different levels. So you had a couple houses closed in the last week. Yeah. That made you feel pretty good. Yes. You bought a new car. Yeah, I did. And you got some new clothes? Yes. Are we really all that surprised that he's got a little bit more of a swagger to Carson, his step today? So this is what Carson told me, and I was a little bit offended by it, and I needed to check myself. He said that, that there was a certain humility about me when I drove the truck, and now I'm arrogant. I don't think I'm arrogant. I don't know. Did you, what, that was an unnecessary <laughs> <laughs> I didn't appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think— don't know. It's not. It's just a little bit new and different. And yeah. new and different just requires some time. Yeah. Change is good. Change is good. Yeah. Louis said he was feeling it, so I'm, that makes me feel a little bit better because he would be straight up with me. I just noticed, I, I just noticed this. I was like, my, my, my brain, it goes different places, but I was noticing how Blake has his hat backwards, and he has one of the buttons left on the snapback, and right. you have one, two, three, five. So I have a really big head. Yeah, I wanted to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really big head. I think I have. Yeah. Uh, I have three. Nice. And when I when I get one, a haircut, three, because I do, yeah. I have a lot of hair. I have a lot of. Um, That's true too, though. It's probably more like hair three. right now. Probably more like three. I would probably. I could probably. No, two would be more comfortable though. Oh, okay. Cool. Anyway. So yeah, Reese, how has it felt? <clears throat> this is one of your biggest months of real estate. Yes, the biggest, yeah, so far. Um, how does that feel? And I'll, I'll be straight up with feeling. you, like, have you taken time to just, like, be freaking stoked that it even happened? I mean, dude, there's more people than ever dropping out of real estate right now since, or the most since 2008 was mm -hmm. the most recent stat. It is the first time since 2008 that the agent count is actually in decline. Mm. Yet you're over here having your best week ever, Mac Miller, RIP, you know? Um, it's, it's, I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh, I've had to have a couple moments when I was driving back from Fresno in the new car. Yeah. Um, was just kind of like a wild moment for me. Cause, and, and this was why is because my truck had 359,000 miles on it. 
And so, so when I looked down at the mileage count, I mean, it literally was 84 miles. Wow. And I was like, frick, that's wild. So, I, and then I just thought back, I was like, dang, like this, just like we've had a lot of both my retail business and then also our acquisitions. We've had a couple of closings this, this month. So yeah. just like all of that was just crazy. But it's also like at the same time, like it, it was very showing and it kind of told me it was like going to the bank and depositing a check is not all that everyone cracks it up to be. It's funny how short lived it's so that short lived. Is, huh? and, and listen, I am so grateful that for the blessings that Amen. you know God has I given me this month. I feel you. But it's also like I don't know, it's just not It's not whoa, it. Yeah, it's you not know, it. it's not like a heavenly angelic moment, all my problems are solved type yeah. of deal like I feel like social media makes it look like. A little bit of weight off though, you know. Sure. Yes. A little bit of stress, like taxes, taking care of, like all that stuff. Taxes. Yeah, I know. Sucks, but anyway, yeah, it was just, you know, it was weird. It was just kind of like a crazy moment. It's cool. Yeah. And part of it is I get to relive a lot of my real estate because I remember like I told Reese when you came in the office and I was like, I just have to ask because it's been so long for me. What is it like to have such little like... Responsibility is not the right word because Reese, you do have a lot of responsibilities. Um, but I would say maybe financial obligations. How does it feel to have so little financial obligations and such large margins? <laughs> like yeah. I said, soak that in. Yeah. Because uh, that is a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And I think I got to uh, mm-hmm. live it in. I was telling you for a few months. And it was probably good that I didn't live it in for too long because I just continuously reinvest. I feel like everything Mm -hmm. that I make and then put myself in this corner and then freak out and then figure out a way. And then we keep growing. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing. I'm trying not to have it be so traumatic on my being, but for whatever reason, um, a funny way of doing it and somehow getting to the other side. God's good. But anyway, I just think you feeling what you're feeling is important. Us talking mm-hmm. about it's important. And then Reese, you being a leader on this team, being able to grow with agents while they grow. Yeah. Um, is important. So you understanding what it feels like and the, everything that you're going through is going to benefit and help others. Yeah. Cause man, dude, you know, I preach it all the time, but it took me a while to figure out, Oh yeah, this check isn't the angelic moment. No. The other side of the hill that I thought it was like, Oh, the grass is greener. No. Cause then, Lewis, same thing with you. What'd you say today? You're like, I feel like I'm going through like this. Yeah. Uh, Blake and I were talking. I said, I feel like I'm going through a patch where we had a, we had 10 deals. Most majority of them closed this month Mm -hmm. and super grateful on the acquisition side, acquisition side. It was a, it was a big month as well, but like, it's kind of like you said, you know, it's like, it's almost like a baseball If baseball hits. You just stinks for a little bit and then it goes away and you're like, crap. Now I got to get time to get more deals. Yeah. 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 But the, what, what, what will help if is if you you can uh, it can go bo- it can go two ways it's crap and you get more deals and then you can become like I don't know what to do or it's like you just go back to work I feel like there's yeah. some people that just get like um, I don't know just get scared and and yeah. like uh, I don't know what to do rather than use that feeling yeah. as a motivation yeah so. well that's what I thought today too because I was thinking about as I was driving I kind of told you guys like okay like I got the car like okay what's our next thing that we're going for Mm -hmm. and that's what i was thinking this morning when i was coming to work i was like let's get these dispo packets out and let's get some crap done because like we need escrows we need escrows you know i have to praise god for a second here the fact that we've been continuously closing deals now Mm -hmm. for a few months Mm -hmm. we have the pipeline of we have rehabs going we have active uh dispos that need to be assigned we We have have some we've couple we're purchasing yeah. yeah So the balance is there yep. and now, and I think we got to have them on soon. Cade, yeah. We have Cade mm-hmm. helping run operations on the acquisition side. We got the VAs working now. I really want to get into all that stuff. Yeah. It's funny because we do nerd out on that stuff, Yeah, but we don't nerd out on it crazy on the podcast. I wonder if at some point we'll, we'll we evolve just, and then we're going to nerd yeah. out on that stuff, but I still want to keep it fun, you know? Yeah. And like applied to everyone. So There's it's like that, for it. yeah. that balance. For it. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, we all have like milestones and different, like different, uh, obviously like experiences, right? Right. So do you remember when you got your first check in real estate? Yeah. 
it, it felt really great, right? Yeah. So I experienced a new feeling this last week that I was like, dang, this felt even better than my first check. My first check, by the way, was 1500 bucks. Nice, dude. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, good for you. And uh, what I experienced last week, I forgot about two closings. And mm. that, me forgetting, but knowing they were happening, was yeah, like one of the best dude. feelings. Like, oh, I forgot about that. Been a while, huh? Yeah. Since you've gotten to be like that. Yeah. yeah. So that was cool. I will say, so though, because back to what we were talking about earlier about like the angelic moment. Yeah. The angelic moment that I experienced this week was like, I just had so much fun when we were there at the dealership. Yes, yeah. you guys went with me to go. That yeah. was like the highlight of my week, like even more than driving the car home. Like I was just grateful that you guys were there with me because that, was, that so was, fun. Fun cause I, like, was so much fun. Because I like it's great to experience all these things, but I get to experience it with you guys, my best friend. So it's yeah, like, I agree with that. Yeah, it was fully, just, dude. I loved it so much. So thank you guys for being there. Oh, with dude. Me. It's a great day. Yeah. That was a great day. Great day. You you finessed the dealership though, I will say that. I well, I mean, I don't Let's know. Let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah. I guess we can talk about that. Yeah. Um Yeah, I mean f- freaking A. Well, do we want to finish up? What did Yeah. Well, we were pretty much finished, yeah. I guess. We're all kind of like we need more deals. Yeah. yeah. I think the difference between you guys and me at this time is I still have a couple of those ones that have been lagging and I'm mm. like we're almost there. We're on know? the breakthrough though. But we're For you we're too. walking we're I believe we've experienced our breakthrough and, and now it's walking yes, out. Yes. You, actually, if you want, I think you should share this because uh, you said we're, you're, we're making our own market. So yeah. What, what did you do last week? How yeah. many, how many Talk about that, doors and please. stuff? Yeah. Oh, guys. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Well, no Luis, one. you talk about it. No, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean... It's no big deal. I don't know how many doors we pick up last week. Um, I can't remember. It was in the like a, was it, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it was a, it was over twenty. Over right? twenty, yeah. yeah. In s- for four days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, the most than, of them were on four days. Yeah, less than four days. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. It was like twenty five. Like I don't know. Or you want to know? What one of my friends told me. I will share this. Yeah, share it. Please. We can talk more about that. Yeah. The difference between the one percent and the ninety-nine is what they create out of thin air. And there was some stuff created out of thin air last week. I yep. guess we can just leave it there. That's mm-hmm. all I want to say. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, is the market rough? Yeah. Is that an excuse to no. stop? Heck, no, no, it's not. Not if you know this is what God put you here to do. If you're lazy, it's a great excuse. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. Um, I think we talked about it, but the big audience in a market that is not as hot as it was investors and first time home buyers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think we're leaning there hard. Mm-hmm. Our marketing, our everything else is, I would say more towards the younger generation, first time home buyers, but our network and our everything, our sphere of influence, everything mm-hmm. heavy on the investor side. But then the question becomes, okay, yeah, we need to hit investors, but Investors, you don't hit the same way as no. different chart disboing chart. a single family residence we're figuring out, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. There's a whole a other knowledge way. base, vocabulary. What is required to even analyze a deal is different. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, I'm obsessed with it, man. Uh, right? It. And the value, and it's not. Is it intimidating to you guys? Like for me, I, it's not like, uh-huh. you know, whatever. Is it at all intimidating? from where you guys sit to have those multifamily doors and knowing how to analyze it? Um, yes and no. I just actually just thought about it. I mean, um, it's, you guys it's, have done great by the way, but oh, I just, I'm, I mean, I do what I do. I just kick you guys in the fire. The thing intimidating though, the thing that is intimidating and it did a little, it did freak me out just a little bit this morning when we were talking about it. The thing that isn't intimidating is when we start talking about like in vacancy rates, that sort of stuff. Like yeah. when you brought that up, I was like, oh, frick. I knew I because was going to scare you guys if I brought out all of the different things. You have to understand there's different ways to calculate things and it's not like we did it wrong. Yeah. We're but, doing it the right way for a cap rate but there's also levels like oh ultimately we're going to get into some cost segregation stuff on the tax side like i'm getting we're getting the feet wet but the ultimate goal is we need to know how to analyze deals if we ever want to be able to purchase them ourselves but the way the way that i kind of calmed myself down after that 
was every time we've done a level up like that, the outcome of it is just blessings. So it's yep. like I have to, you know, keep it in check that like every time we've done something that I was a little freaked out about, like the first time we did the merit one, I was like, oh, frick, I don't know what I'm doing here. Figured it out though. Huh? Figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do some education, cool stuff on that, yeah, and continue to fun. grow ourselves. But it'll be really good. Um, yeah, appreciate all your guys' help with that yeah. stuff. Excited to get that sent out today, baby. It's gonna yes, be good. Sir. All right, we're back, baby. Just got done talking about the multifamily stuff. Thank you guys. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go educate, learn some more. Yep. And keep going, right? Level up. Level up, baby. Woo! That's what it's all about now. We want to talk about congruency. What, what is congruency? No idea. Mm-mm. It's too big of a word for my tiny brain. We don't talk about ourselves that way. I thought. You, well, yeah. That, <laughs> you want to restate you're absolutely that? Absolutely right. Uh, it's too big of a word for my uh, knowledge right now. Appreciate that. It's a uh, lot better. Knowledge, yes. Um, anyone taking geometry? Nope. I did. I took math one, two, and three. I barely passed. Hmm. Did you guys try your hardest? Weren't geometry like triangles and yeah, yeah shapes, squares. shapes, angles, and spheres? Yeah. Did we try our hardest? Probably not. That was nope. high school. I had a geometry teacher named Mr. Chow <laughs> in high school. It was Mr. Chow. On the last day of school, to say, did you say Chow? <laughs> 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 If I was in French. <laughs> <laughs> Great <It's point>. an <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't offer French at Tulare Union, but at one time they did. I think mm. my mom actually took it. Wow. She told me. Does she speak French. fluent French now? No, she does not. Oh. But I think she took a few years of it. That's I did good. a few years of Espanol. Espanol. All right. So congruency. Uh it's been a big word for me and something that I didn't really care about until I just started taking inventory on myself. I think we've talked about that a lot, but a lot of the big move, I think the last year has been, how do we move from being specific and dominant and just our industry, our craft and what we do and how do we expand that and explore how do we become whole human beings and what does it look like to run a business that is in the pursuit of making their people whole versus making a quota versus making a whatever. And the congruency that I'm figuring out with myself is that who I was and who I am and who I've been and what I do now, like they're different. But even more than that is the Blake that I was at work versus the Blake that I was over here versus the Blake that I was over here, they were all over the place. And part of it was because I was in sales and I was trying to make a name for myself. And so you get out there and you have to people please. You have to make everyone happy all the time. And I got to the tail end and I realized, well, Frick, who are you, Blake? Who are you? And it's like, well, I'm the, no, that's what you do. You sell real estate. You go help, but who are, who are you? And then you start out, I go deeper. Well, who are you here? And then who are you? over here and I realized there was a disconnect so yeah I didn't know who I was because I knew who I needed to be for all of these different audiences but I didn't know who I need to be for myself who do I need to show up for today was the question I asked but how do I show up for myself today and then how can I help Mm. myself show up for you I'd switch it around but it's always because I have this guilt on me that me caring about myself was selfish. I know that sounds weird, but I still go through that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, caring for myself, resting, taking the time to go do something I enjoy. Yeah. I felt like that was always selfish and I was just in, I have to provide, 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 survive, survive, survive. At the expense of what? Mm. And at the cost of who? And so my pursuit really in the last, I mean, it's been the last year, but I would say with all of you guys, the last five or six months has been, 
how do I be a congruent Blake in as many areas as possible so I'm not exhausted of being someone or something that God never made me to be. Hmm. So my dad, this past weekend, we went to summer camp, and yeah. um, my dad talked about identity. Church summer camp, right? Church summer camp, yes, okay, with cool. our youth group. We had a great time. And he talked about um, identity in the scripture, and the first, is it the first night or the second message? He brought up the verse um, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and I know that yeah. that offends people, but I don't care. Um but understanding that I think is probably, I, I would say is the, is the first step to figuring that out. So knowing, knowing to who, who you are in the Bible and who you belong to God's word. Yes. Who you belong to, who, what you are, who made you, how they made you, what purpose in his image, you know, right. Are you saying you can't understand yourself without absolutely trying to understand who made you? Absolutely. Wow. I know. Sorry. Seems pretty profound. You're made with a purpose. Exactly how you are. Yikes. Oof. Careful. You know what I mean? It's gnarly. But yeah, well, identity identity's, identity's identity's big. It's rooted, dude. Because, it's rooted. Um you're made with a purpose. We're all made with a purpose. Yeah. And that's you know, you're big on that, on on what your on what your purpose is and Why I you applaud here? you for that. Yeah. Because that's like we've been talking about that a lot recently of like you yeah. know, figuring that out. And if you don't know who made you and why they made you, then you can't figure out anything else. Yeah. And you're going to be wandering around for a very long time trying to figure it out. And you're going to find it in stupid things. Mm. Yeah, you'll find it in something for yeah. sure, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Seeking you will find Yep. no matter which direction you go. Pretty wild. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um and guys, I ain't got it perfect. You oh, guys yeah. know I'm all over the board and I will continuously be all over the board. But I do know that by bringing it to the forefront of our, our brains more often than less often, we're going to be better off. It's a good starting point. Yeah. It's we're we're going to be overall better human beings. Mm-hmm. And if we can just really, it's not about the circumstance. It's about the lens in which we view it. Right. Yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. And so I think us questioning ourselves like, well, what lens am I viewing my life through right now? Mm-hmm. Or what lens am I viewing myself through? Because sometimes we view ourselves through one lens and then we view someone else through a different lens. And it's like, and I know it's going to be backwards for most people, but I can give grace freely to others most of the time. Not all the time. Most of the time, pretty graceful overall, pretty patient, like pretty, but like, when it comes to myself, not patient with myself, not graceful with myself. And at some point that affects my demeanor. It affects even me wanting to be gracious to you. And I will be, but now I'm incongruent because I can't even be gracious with myself. And now a divide starts happening. No one knows about it. Not even ourselves, but our subconscious does. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I would even say that sin does that to you a lot because I know when there's been times in my life when I'm struggling with something and I'm incongruent, I think I'm using the word correctly, but correct me if I'm not, Mm -hmm. but I'm incongruent with like who I am with other people versus like my family. Mm -hmm. Like I've gone through that totally. and, And my, and you know, my dad and we will probably for a long time. Yeah. Well, and, and I know because my dad, I, you don't figure it out when you're in it, but like my dad has pointed out to me and he's like, dude, what's going on with you? Like, what are you doing? And then we have good talk and then we end up being closer. Yeah. But I know that that's sin will fit, do that to you a lot. Oh, totally. You know? Well, it's, and it's the guilt and shame attached yes. to it, right? Yeah. Because then I'm trying to hide and, and hide myself, which I can't do because I'm a terrible liar anyway. But like. You know, you can't hide from God. I can't hide from my parents. Like, but yeah. you're trying to shelter yourself because you're trying to hide your sin. How do you still love yourself in that? Because you we're all going. You lose. No, you lose your feeling. Hmm. You lose feeling when hmm. you're doing that. It's wild. Yet every human being on this whole entire earth is going through that right now. Yeah. 
How often do we talk about it, though? No, never. The reason that guilt and shame exist is because we've all been convinced that we have to hide ourselves, or at least certain parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, dude, I'm, I'm filming this episode, talking in this mic right now, and I have sin issues. Yeah. Even us talking about this. And I know that. Oh, yeah, we don't have it figured out. Let's, that's hard and heavy, but... Yeah. I wish more people would have said, and I'll even say from the pew, I wish they would have said, hey guys, I'm up here right now talking about this, but I am a hypocrite because I am a human being and I will always struggle with something, but I know whose I belong to mm -hmm. and I know who covers me. Yeah. I do not cover myself. I cannot cover my sin. I can cover it from people and that's fine. And God will even give grace for that the whole way. But at some point, mm -hmm. I have to be willing to say, hey, this is what I know I need to do. I'm heading that direction, but I'm not there yet, and that's okay, but I'm on the path. And hey, if you're on the path, like, good for you, good on you. And if you're wrestling right now and not talking about it, know that I'm right there with you and I'm praying with you. I'm mm -hmm. by your side. You're not alone in this, dude. It's the isolation that kills you. Mm -hmm. There, uh, I was at Bible study last night with, uh, we're going through this book called self confrontation and mm -hmm. there was three stages to like this confronting your, your sin issues in your life or no, it was from when you get saved to like continuing the three stages. And I love the three stages. The first one was starting. Yeah. The third one was maturing, mm. but in between there's continuing. Yeah. So it's like, uh, and I was lost my train of thought. Well, I but, but I, you know, you get what I'm trying to I know exactly that. what you're saying. Yeah. And I think it comes down to performance versus being mm -hmm. Jesus came to abolish performance, not saying that performance was bad, but he had to get people to understand that it's about a being. It's about who you are, not what you do necessarily. We can behavior modify ourselves all day long. It'll work in three month increments, bursts, whatever you want to call it. Behavior modification is a short term solution for a long term rooted issue, mm -hmm. deeper and bigger than it's that. It's about the heart change. Yes. And you can't even have heart change unless you're able to be gracious to yourself enough to know that it's not about the doing, it's more about the being. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole wrestling, and I'm in that wrestle right now. Lord, I just want to know what I need to do to be loved by you. And he's like, Blake, it don't matter. I already do. I already love you. It's like, that's hard for my brain. Like I need to have metrics of performance. Like <laughs> God, if I sell three houses this month, do you love me more? He's like, I never gave a crap about that. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? You know, like yeah. it's, it's gnarly, but then you still have to go out and sell. I've sell a lot more than three houses to pay the bills, but in general, yeah. you know, like, so some of the stuff that helped get you here isn't the same stuff that's going to take you to who you need to be. And you have to wrestle that. And that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Lewis, you were going to, you were going to say something. You know, I was, I was going to say that, um, lately, um, in my life, uh, that's helped me a lot is identity mm. and how you said, like being gracious with yourself Yeah, and grateful for you because, maybe your time span of like figuring that out is going to be longer than mine, but I had the opportunity to learn that from you. Yeah. And the minute I focused my the metrics from like, Oh, I need to sell three houses to like, no, who the heck are you? Yeah. And why are you doing this? Yeah. I've had the year to date, the best months I've ever had in my life. Amen. Come on. And that's not just in business. That's just personal life. I mean, just overall, yep. like, and yeah, like nothing's perfect. Yeah. We, we of all, course. we all mess up and, and, um, but it's okay. Yeah. If, if it's okay to mess up because they're all they're, again, they're just learning curves. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. part of the, the experience, right? Mm -hmm. But like, when you're in it, it doesn't feel like an experience. Yeah. It just feels like hell. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's good yeah. stuff, dude. And I know this is a really deep topic and there's no, you don't just arrive no. like, ah, congruency. Mm -hmm. I am Nirvana. You know, like I made it. Yeah. Like that's, the Bible's very clear about that actually. Yeah. Well, you look at the life of Jesus and he was so, he was acted the same with the Pharisees that he did with his disciples. 
Yeah. He he treated that he talked to them the same way. When they had attitude, he addressed their attitude. Yeah. When the disciples had attitude, he addressed their attitude. Yeah. You know? Like it's so he, true. He was so across the board. And he loved them at the same time in both in both cases. Yeah. You know? He was way harsher with what we would consider harsh. He was way harsher with the people that were close to him. Yeah. Even then sometimes the people that weren't Israelites or the outsiders or whatever, he was far more gracious with the non-Jews than he was with the Pharisees, Mm -hmm. the leaders, you know? Well, because the Jews, they didn't have a humbling attitude. Like the, like the women at the well, she knew she, what she was doing was wrong. They had, didn't care. They didn't give a frick. Yeah. They were just doing what they do. You know, Jesus saw people for who they were. Mm Mm-hmm. Instead of who they thought they were. Yeah. And that's why he'll always be my God and my savior. Because regardless of even how I feel or even how I see things, I know that I have a father in heaven that sees me differently. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't believe it sometimes I know it. I was going to say, I agree, man. I think that until you know, and until you know that what you just said, and then until you know who you really are, you can level up in life, but you will not retain. Like, yeah, you can go to level one, level two. If you don't know what your purpose is, who you are, and and, and who created you, yeah, you're gonna go back to level one. It's mm-hmm. only a matter of time. Mm-hmm. Or you might be at a level one hundred, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still level one because it it had no substance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had no meaning. It had no. Depth, but and, the, you know, sorry. No, sorry. And I heard of this saying, I don't know who said it, it might have been you, or I, I'm not too sure, but you might feel like you're level, leveling up, yeah, say a hundred times, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna butcher the same, but it's like you, you just you just leveled up to level one a hundred times, yeah, you never actually went to level two, mm. yeah, you just started, you went to level one, reached the top, then you went all the back, way back to level one, yep, yeah. But God's grace is so good that He's gonna love you through all of the levels, it's true, that's right. Every single time. Yeah. He don't and zap He's going to stay with you at every level that you're going through. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yeah. It's good stuff. And I think, uh, us being mindful in the highs and the lows don't matter. Mm-hmm. My identity is rooted. Yeah. And so Lord, yeah. anyway, it's a great episode. Got a little serious at the end, but Hey, it's good. Yeah. Good stuff. You never know what you're going to get on these episodes. No, you don't. And we got a great next one coming up. Frickin we do. Learn some good stuff this week we get to talk about, and it is titled, someone want to say it? Go ahead, Reese. Go ahead, Blake. All right. We're going to be talking about the hunter versus the farmer and knowing the difference between the two and how to love people exactly where they're at, which kind of feeds off of what we were talking about here. So excited for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brixton, for sponsoring this episode. So excited for that. And thank you, Fresno Subaru. Yes. As well for the, the sponsorship That's and the great right. deal on the WRX. Yeah. Blueberry Moore. And we'll be back next week at the Not So Real Estate Podcast. Woo! Woo! Hoorah! Woo! <laughs> <laughs>